follow the book, uh, even if I don't really use uh, the way the book is doing to importing, because I work mostly with SPSS data. But it wasn't the purpose. But uh, if somebody is interested to know more about how to import SPSS data, it's something I know well with the label, the, OK. So it's, but we are following the tidyverse book. So, yeah. and um, what was interesting for me, and thanks, Ryan, to uh, try to encourage us to, to present something, because I would have never discovered Yarig here again, without, this, without having to present something tonight. So it's also, if you are interested, I could then after share my code. So data import. Ah. OK, so we have different format, different package. So we are using most of the time the um, SSV, and we have the tidyverse to do that. Uh, SAS, SPSS, data, AVEN, foreign are the package to use. Excel, you have read XLS according to the book, but OpenXLS is uh, somewhat better. After it depends which one you have uh, you want to use, but there is ton of package to do that. So anyway, uh, we have ton package, ton of format, but we are going to uh, to stock to stick on dot on uh, PyDiverse. So what are the difference between uh, the underscore and the dot? The dot is coming from the base, R, and uh, the underscore is the one from the tidyverse package. It is faster, directly into type table, and is what we talked last time, is uh, what is a table, what, what is doing. And also, no need to use string as factor equal false. What could be an issue when you have character uh, when you have string uh, variable according to what you are doing, sometimes you don't want to have factor. So it's, it's just that it's fast away easier. So Sandra, get Sandra, can, would, would you mind going back to your first slide for just a yeah. second? So, um, so these, those other, where you have listed there, Haven and foreign, those are packages? Yeah. Right, okay. So those are packages for reading SPSS and SAS. I see. I mostly use Avon myself. Uh -huh. And uh, yes, and it's pretty good to work with uh, label data. Okay. Because then, after you have the, all the attributes, all the variable, the, the label of the variable, the label of uh, the value label, you are, everything is kept, uh -huh. but it's not really a timbre. I don't know exactly what is the format after, but it's a way to import SSS data. Okay. And even with data coming from SAS, it's uh, it work. Uh, it's package I use. I know they work. Okay. okay. So reader, the uh, the radar is from the Tidyverse Galaxy, right? Yeah. Okay. And then there's those for the special one. <clears throat> and then read Excel is a different package that's yeah. just aimed at reading Excel Excel, Excel data and, uh, and and CSVs, I assume. Yeah, but uh, I never use it. Usually, I use Open XLS. Okay. And after you could define which um, uh, which uh, which sheet. So I don't know about Read XLS, but it's the one in the book. So I didn't want to add another package. But yeah. anyway, it's uh, there supposed. Yes, there is other package to open Excel uh, Excel file. Okay. 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 Okay, so sorry if I go too fast. No, that's okay. We'll, no, no, we'll, we'll slow you down. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. So now, so it's just to, so you could note the difference between the underscore and the dot. Here, an example. So I try using uh, a very, very basic data, uh, very, very basic uh, dot SAV file. And actually, at the beginning, uh, um, we wanted to present a different option. But anyway, what we can do, and the easiest, is just to use the import data set from the console. Because when we do that, after we could access all the option, and it's easier after, you know, to check out that, okay, now we can see that we want the first row as name, we have the trim space, we have the delimiter, we have the command, we have the NA, we have the local. So, here, it's a really a good starting point to understand the different option. Just go to the console. It's really easy. You just have to click, to double click on your file. And after, you are here. So 
And exactly, and after the code is directly written for you, you have nothing to do. And it, um, it, it uses the read R package? This, yes, this page. and automatically, yes, automatically it was using, you know, in just, uh, so in, when I did that, Tidyverse was uploaded on my uh, session. So the code directly load the package mm -hmm. and uh, import everything. So it will be for at least to understand the option, it seems to me that's the easiest. Okay. You see, and because you see your, uh, you, even you see, uh, oh, I don't have a screenshot where you see the file. I have one after. So after it's easy, uh, it's very easy. And directly you have everything, your variable. And what I want you to notice is at the beginning, I put T, F, and directly the code uh, recognized that it was a logical. So it's this one is supposed to work most of the time. If you have clean data, you have almost nothing to do. You just have to follow this uh, to be sure that here you click on what you need. For example, if you are, want to define your uh, NA are different, if you want to skip, uh, uh, to skip some, uh, some line, if you are using a semicolon instead of comma. So it will say, I will say that it will be my go, uh, go method. And it's really wonderful, why? Because I try also, instead of using a comma or um, semicolon delimiter, here I put myself a tab. And uh, so I try with that. And after in, in the console here, I click on the delimiter. And what is look at what is happening directly. Here after, the console automatically recognize that here we have to use read delim. So we don't have to think, we just have to click. So, and it's something I, I wasn't aware of that it was so powerful, just clicking, just looking at the code. So basically you have nothing to do. And now we have did the read delim. And what I've done here, I have put zero in my NA. And now I got exactly what I wanted. And my file at the beginning was something like that. So with uh, just uh, um, some tab as delimiter, and I have what I want. So I will say that my recommendation will be keep it simple, don't code, just use that. And after, just to learn how to do it, if you have any question, just play uh, play with the console. What is uh, it? What is? Uh, yeah. it, what is it escape double? That argument. Uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't. Now, now I don't remember. I read it, but now, now I don't. Now I don't remember at all. But uh, yes, it's a good question, but I don't remember. Yeah, no, I, 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 it might have to do with like if you need double slashes or. Probably. Yeah, I know what is a comment is when sometimes you have in your at the beginning of your file you have some line you don't want to take. All right. Yeah. I remember, but the escape double I didn't. I know about the the local, but not all. Okay. And we can just play now because now we have a better understanding. We can play a bit with the option. So uh, this time I put a skip because it's my first file. So now what I'm showing is about this file when I have uh, a first line as some name and after I have some um, the name, the column names and after I have some uh, information, I have T and F, which will matter later. So now, so now if I use skip, I'm not using what my previous name, but now I can't use the one I want. I change them. And also here, what I'm doing here now is that I use flag as character. So instead of parsing as logical, it's parse as character. So I force it because automatically for the code T and F mean true and false. But if it's something you are not interested in, you just have to change it in call type. Because all is about parsing after, but uh, what is happening in the code that guess, guess what we're doing, guess our colon, 
and but sometimes it doesn't work. And I have tried with a bit of example when I have put one more comma and instead of putting a number, I have put a letter. And after you could see that you have parsing uh, failure and the code tell you exactly what is happening. Uh, so it could help if you don't have clean data, it could help you to figure out what is happening. Uh, there is a lot of um, there is a lot of information about parsing. Uh, I didn't sum them here because it's not like it's not interesting, but it's something you have to be aware of, hoping that you don't have to use. So, in when, what's the case you have to do it yourself? It's mostly when you have uh, some uh, um, file from other country when people use a comma. Uh, for the grouping mark for the number, or they add the currency symbol, and you just want to have the number, stuff like that. Or if you want just, if you have a, a line of code and you just want to take a number, or if you deal with um, different characters from different country because the file wasn't encoded UTF, sometimes I have to do something like that if I got file from people uh, using a Mac. Sometimes, yes. Uh, and also, you have also a lot about time and date, uh, how to format them, because they are not the same according to the country where they are, and people, they don't write it the same. In uh, North America, you write it in a way. In European countries, they write it another way. Uh, it's, there is a lot of change. I don't know if you have any question, but no question? Okay. Uh, the main resource I will suggest you to use is first of all to go to the sheet sheet. In the sheet sheet, everything is explained. In the sheet sheet, you have the explanation for read Bellim, for read FWF, the read TCV. You have everything is written, so there is ton of information on. Uh, the import data because it's the main stuff we have to do when we do anything. So there is full of information and uh, the sheet sheet should be enough. So I, I do have a question for the group. Um, I, I myself use read CSV quite a bit. Does anybody come across certain files that use that would require like read the limb or um, uh, you know, I was thinking about the tabbed limited files because uh, everything that I work with is mainly in CSV and I was just wondering what types of data if people have come across it that do use a different delimiter. Uh, I use read line sometimes. Uh, read line is when you want to, to read just the line and after you could parse the line. Actually, I, it just was just because it was a, a very, very dirty data file when after I just have to grab something inside. So I didn't include it, but read line is basically just, you get the, you get the lines and after it's up to you to do a lot of cleaning, stuff like that. Uh, it's, and it's belonging to a read R, uh, I think so, yes. I think it's not explained here, but it's, um, but it was on the book also, read line. So would, so read line would, if you were to use read line on a, on a CSV file, would it um, would it accept the whole entire yes. row? Yes, and after, for example, you could do that. Then after, you will have to split yeah. all the uh, to split everything. So it's not something you really want to do, uh, but it could help if if you just have a, a, a line and after you want to grab something inside and you know exactly what you want. Maybe if your data is really messy, you could use read line. Yeah. Then or you if you um, uh, or if you do some uh, sometimes some kind of uh, of a challenge when people they send you that there is some kind uh, some kind of challenge when people they send you a line and after you have to be able to grab the color stuff like that so it's more uh, it's when you want to parse and to use regex. Yeah. You can do this kind of stuff, but uh, uh, best is not to have to use it because yeah. after you really have to check out that what you do is, yes, you really have to check out what you are doing. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, Colin, to answer your question, I, I think I would imagine that most uh, data uh, is already generally in CSV format. And so almost seems like you'd either be using like a really archaic system that would output it in some other kind of delimited format. And something else, yeah. when I set up, uh, when I set up uh, this file at the beginning, uh, I write it with notepad as a text. And if I use as text, I cannot import it. So I resave it uses .csv to be able to import it, even if at the end, it's a delim. So I saw that this one, um, so I don't, I don't think that the console method work if it's not a .csv. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was thinking it would be like an older system because it seems like, I mean, I, I'm not going to say it's a standard, but you know, the data that I work with, it seems like you could always get it in. I shouldn't say always, but for the majority of time, it's it. You can get a CSV format, and so I was just wondering if people know of any specific examples because I've never come. I should never say never, but I I rarely come across anything that has something else that would you have to uh, use a different delimiter. I use uh, T read. TSV a lot, and I also use read table a lot because I mean I can probably share what kind of data a read dot table helps out with. Well, that'd be cool to see if, if you're able to share. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great because I've never come across it, but that's just because I've never I've never seen it. So, and I think I think Sandra, yeah. I wonder if you might do it, uh, if you might do it deliberately, if you have data that has commas in it. So like we, we use, uh, we have addresses a lot and it might have the whole entire address, you know, comma, city, comma, state, comma, country, whatever. And if you, I know at least in Excel, if you try to import that, sometimes you'll you won't, it'll, it'll miss a line because it'll interpret that as different columns. And so you might deliberately try to extract that with like a weird delimiter and so that it's not confused by the commas in there. I don't know, just wanted to... Oh, no, that makes, I mean, that makes total sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So this is a file. This has several tables within it. And if I want to extract maybe just one column from this table, then I can do read table and then skip until this line. And then tell tell that I want to go up till this line. This line, then I can just get the whole thing as a table, and then I can manipulate that. I can do that with like all different kinds of tables here. That's cool. I've never seen that. <laughs> that is that is different. <laughs> I've never seen that kind of data before. And that's a, did you say that's a read TSV or what? no? So this is a read table. Read table, oh yeah. Read TS, yeah, read TSV is something which I usually create myself. Like I just have, if I have to like, I have names of species and then I have names of fossils and I don't have any and any header or anything. Yeah. Then I just find it easier to put a tab and then put the name there and then just use it as it is. So I see, so I see up, up top, it's like it has API location. Was this pulled from through like, a, uh, like an application programming interface or like, where did this like come from is what I'm asking. This I'm is, just curious. Yeah, so this is a result of a, of a, of a package which, uh, um, which manipulates uh, DNA sequences. Huh. That's interesting. I fed my DNA sequences and then it gave me like all the summaries and everything. Oh, so this is like a program that like calculates yeah. summary statistics for for, uh, yeah. for DNA sequences and stuff. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's... Read, read underscore table has been very useful for me. Like you can just skip to with wherever you want to go in. You can just use cool. it. Huh. And you just specify which row. Like I started this row and go to the other row, and that's and it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just interesting to see other like data formats 
I mean, I just, I've never seen that before. I mean, like a JSON format and like a list format, like stuff like that, when you come across it, it's just different. And so it's kind of amazing to think about how some of these tidyverse tools can just be used to easily parse this into a, a tidy data set or at least into a tibble to be tidy. So that's cool. Thanks for sharing. So it was a short chapter, you know, to, uh, yeah, to present. Okay. That's great. Um, <clears throat> cool. Anybody else have any thoughts on, on data import and or any other packages that you use on it? Oh, how about dates? The conversation about dates. I always find that to be an interesting conversation. Um, do people come across different like date standards or do people work with dates? I see Monza shaking her head no. Yeah, I, because in my country, we have the date first at the day first and then the month. So I have used many expired stuff in the lab because of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know it's the same in France also. It's not like in North America. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I, we probably should change it, but you know, you know how we are here in, in the U.S. Um, yeah, no, we, we do it a lot, and, and I've played around a little bit with the uh, with the Lubridate part of uh, of the Tidyverse, which I haven't done it a whole lot, but it's been pretty pretty helpful. Um, it's been interesting to to think through. So, um, but yeah, dates dates are crazy. I think Lubridate works great, except for when it comes to time data, like hours, minutes, seconds. And then HMS works pretty good for that. But then there, I saw somebody rolled out another package that uh, tries to attempt to fill in some of those gaps. But yeah, yeah I think dates have all, when I first when I first started doing this, dates was, dates were always a struggle. And so it was kind of neat to kind of look at this and see how dates actually get parsed. And so that was kind of interesting to see how this like parse date function actually works. Um, because I think that was kind of important how, you know, it determines how to parse it. And so that was kind of interesting for me. But um, I'm sure that you should have a way to convert a date into a number. Just because it's like uh, I used to do that in SAS. It means that a date could be a number. Then after all your operation, you do that on number the subtraction, stuff like so. And at the end, you go to the date, but at least you are sure that everything is properly converted. Yeah. Yeah, so the Excel, what is it? January 1st, 1970, or the number of days or the number of seconds? Yeah, does anyone know how to, how to make Excel stop making it, everything into dates? <laughs> Um, just hell bent on making everything <laughs> making everything text yeah like like if if i'm just if i'm even putting two numbers it's not date it just con tries to convert them into date i haven't been able to find a solution to that i think that might just be a format Maybe good at changing the format from a from a date to a number. Could you also maybe um, the book talks about write underscore CSV? Could you write it as a CSV and then open it in Excel and then save it as an XLSX file? Yeah, that's a good idea. I should try that. There's also there's also another package out there that has a write Excel function. I don't think we, I don't know if we talked about it. I kind of ran across it the other day. But there's another one with a write.xlsx function. I can't remember what I can't remember the package, but um, let me see if I can find it real quick. While you're looking for that, one other question that I had just around process in general is um, is how much data would you write in? So so for instance, like we have a lot of data that we're that we store on the SQL server. And sometimes it's dozens 
up to like 150 columns. Would you, do you think it would be better to import all 150 columns and then use a select command to only extract the columns that you want? Or would you start by just extracting just the columns that you want? Or does it even really matter? Is there one reason to, to choose to get the least amount of data that you need in first? Or would you pull all of it in first and then manipulate it from there? Why don't you just pull five uh, observations with everything? And after to look at what you need, you know, because yeah, yeah, uh, because it's a connection question. It's when people access data through a database. Uh, I know that, yeah, but uh, I know that sometimes people they extract just few, few row, select mm. what they want, and then after they select all the column in the total. But they never export, they never uh, take everything. Take everything, yeah. I think to get at Ryan's question, um, well, because the, the thing that's rolling through my mind is, is that um, if you're going to pull them all in, like all those columns, you want to make sure that they parse correctly, right? And so 150 columns is kind of hard to manage. So it would be nice to kind of have like, like if you bring it in to be able to parse those automatically in some way. So it, what's nice about that, because when I was reading the book, if you kind of automatically like parse it right when it's imported, then you know if there's an issue on the import, there's something wrong with your data. And so that might be something to kind of consider about maybe just pulling out what you need and then parsing out those specific ones, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Because the other issue is like, where are you also going to offload like, like the processing of it? Like, are you going to have your, you know, your database do that? Or are you going to have your computer do that too? Yeah. I know R can do it though. In memory, 150 columns. I mean, I, I think it does pretty well. At least on my computer, it does well. Yeah. I have a question from the. Oh. Okay, no go ahead. Um. This they talk about the type convert function, and I didn't understand what it was doing. Uh, the type, the type convert towards the bottom. Yeah. Do you want to share what you're looking at, or uh, or can you can you clarify? Yeah, I can share the screen. So, um, so they're saying that we can diagnose problems easily if we read all the columns as character vectors, and then I didn't understand that part. I didn't see what it was doing. I can scroll down. So this is the data frame. And then what is type convert doing? So type convert, yeah. I wonder if, if type convert is what it automatically does um, when you just, if you do like um, read CSV, and it does the automatic parsing, that automatic parsing might be done the type convert command. And so I, maybe what he's saying is, if you, just, um, if you just import everything as a character and then manually or deliberately put in the type convert, you can have a little more control over it. That, that's my first oh, guess. Okay. But, okay. but any, any, who else? Any thoughts on it? Um, so I just looked up the docs. It says that uh, this is a useful if you need to do some manual munging. You can read the columns in this character, clean it up with regular expressions, and then let read R take another stab at parsing it. So I think you're I think you're on the right track. And what your what your explanation was, Ryan. And I found that package that I was talking about. It, it Sandra already kind of mentioned it already. It was open XLSX is the other one. 
Um, there's some more steps within that to write to this to an Excel file, but OpenXLSX I've I've used a few times, and I think it's. Yeah, you can when you write. If you want, you could uh, you could set up. Um, uh, you could at least do some border stuff like that, but it takes a lot, a lot of time to have something. So it's only my, it only works if you are going to produce. Always, always exactly the same. That after you could spend your time to center everything, to round everything, to put the line. Because if you don't do it, if you don't do it a lot, then after it's so far away, is it just to do it after in Excel? You know, after the point is to be efficient. It's not because it's possible to do it that you have to spend more time to code. Then, so I have in, uh, I have a code uh, which do that because it's always the same files I'm, I'm producing, but it took me a lot of time because you have to um, uh, set up the name for all the um, all your sheets. Then after you have to write, and after you have to set up all the format for everything. And what doesn't work, uh, what I wanted first to get, it was a conditional formatting, but the conditional formatting I never found something to be able to do it like in Excel. And my client, they like the color. So anyway, I could never find out. So I know that anyway, because the conditional formatting, I have to do then after I have to click on Excel. <sighs> I didn't invest too much, but it's something, it's something I would love to be able to do is to have to, to be able to do the conditional formatting like in Excel with the same color, but in R, they don't like the same colors than in Excel because they're not supposed to be uh, nice for uh, everyone and for people, blind color people. So you don't have the palette from red to green. So it was a complaint that I have about the color. I think that's always the hardest thing, at least that the right part of it is figuring out how you want to export it. It's kind of always been a challenge for me, um, right? CSV works, but like, like Sandra was saying, it's like, if you know, if my boss or supervisor wants something that's formatted, then you have to jump over to Excel and format it because there's just not a lot of options. And so um, I echo what Sandra's yeah. saying. But there is also a very nice package if you work with PowerPoint, is Officer. Because after you could, uh, if you have to do always, always, always the same PowerPoint, then after if you have a template, you can directly put your title, you can save your chart exactly what you want. You could after create your appendix, but it takes a lot of time, but it's so the issue most of the time is to balance between uh, manual work and coding. And sometimes manual work is faster. <laughs> that's true. So, <laughs> that's, a, yeah. that's true. I also think that part, I think something that's missing from this chapter and something that I've kind of run across quite a bit, and this is just my own experience, um, uh, interfacing with other, uh, you know, data sources and importing through other data sources other than like read CSV. So like Ryan said, with, you know, databases and stuff like that, making connections into those. Um, Google Sheets 4, uh, I think Google Sheets, I use Google Sheets quite a bit. So pulling and pushing data from there is another way to import data. And then um, we do a lot of stuff with like Google BigQuery. So that's another, it's just a data warehouse solution through Google. And so I think that's something that, I think this chapter could expand on a little bit, but how do you read in those other kind of file formats or other types of data sources as well? You know, uh, one thing that I would be very interested to see is, um, is what are the best tools for after you've imported data to assess um, how many unique values do I have in this column? How many are missing? What's the range on these dates? What's the, um, you know, just to, to get some kind of a view of the landscape of your data after you've imported it. And I've come across a couple of packages and some of them are better than others. And um, maybe it's something that, that I can touch on a little bit in, a, in a next week's call or the week after. Um, but if you guys have ways of, of importing data and before you go through it all, just taking a, 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 a look at what do you have here? So like averages, 
um, ranges, missing values, number of unique values. Any, anything? Not really, because I work with, um, you know, I work with survey data, so they are supposed to be clean, but my uh, my DP system is completely messy, and most of the time, they send me um, 8,000 columns, and actually, most of them are empty. So the only thing I know for sure is how to remove the empty column. Yes, it's the only thing I have to do is to remove, but after everything is clean, so I never investigate something just to look at the data, because everything is supposed to be very clean. So have you tried to use the summary, just the summary function? Like once you import it, just use, it's just summary? Yeah, um, uh, I, I was a long time ago. And Glimpse? Glimpse, yeah. Yeah, we talked about Glimpse a couple times. That might help. Yeah. Um, there was a long time ago, I had seen it a long time ago, but somebody wrote like a, uh, a convenience package or something that like it does a complete like report on your data i never tried it but i i heard of it like a long time ago and i was like oh this is neat and then i just kind of lost it hmm. and i might this you have the package nanyar excuse me nanyar it's a package to um to find out the percentage of missingness by row by colon stuff like that so if your question is about missingness, there is some package focused on missingness, but not on uh, average, median. It's Nanyar, something like that. I don't think, uh, it, 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 that doesn't ring a bell. But like I said, I came across it a long time ago and I was like, oh, this is neat. And I never bookmarked it. So um, I can do some digging around and see if I can find it. But I know what you're saying, Ryan. There's not like a, there's not like just like one function you can run and it tells you everything that you need to yeah. kind of do a exploratory dive into it. There's uh, there's one I came across that actually presented it pretty well. Um, so I'll show that I'll show that in the coming week. Um, but it was I mean I, I also needed it to add up. It did like average and um, and median and whatever, but I also needed it to do some, which it didn't. And so I, I didn't make much past that. But no, but so uh, you see my screen? So if you are interested in uh, uh, missing data visualization, is this package you have to use. Yeah, so I think I I think I found it just doing like a quick Google search. It's um, there's a package called uh, I think it's called Data Explorer, and I mean it gives you it's it gives you like a, an output doing exploratory data analysis. It looks pretty robust. Like it gives you a lot of stuff, um, but yeah, it's called Data Explorer. I've never used it, but it might be something to look at. I will take a look at that. I can pass along a link to in Slack so everybody has it. But yeah, there's like, there's this, it looks like it just like takes all of your data and then it just, it outputs like an exploratory like data analysis. That's cool. Yeah, I'm just looking at it, at the, the page that came up. This might be the vignette page or something, but that does look pretty cool. Um, well, we may. We may spend a, a, a session talking about data exploration packages and what, what kinds of things you guys use to, use to explore through your data.